It's time to be equipped with spiritual battle. Defending the Faith is a show to train Christians worldwide to be effective teachers and speakers on the subject of biblical creation so that the next generation can stand firm on the biblical truth and defend their faith. Now here is your host of Defending the Faith, Mike Riddle. Welcome, this is Mike Riddle, host of Defending the Faith, right here on 94.1 FM, KBXL, The Voice. And we're on every Saturday at 12 noon. And if you like what we're doing here, tell others to come in and listen. 12 noon every Saturday, Defending the Faith, here by Mike Riddle. We also have a website called creationtraining.org. If you happen to miss these shows, they're also out there on podcast. You can get them through the radio show, KBXL, or you can get them from our website, creationtraining.org. So tell others about this program. We want to continue getting God's Word out to as many people as we can. Well, last week, we had a pretty powerful talk about America, our foundation. We talked about the fact that America has a biblical foundation, and that cannot be denied no matter what teachers say in the schoolroom. We saw evidence of that in our founding documents, the original public education system, and on our Washington, D.C. monuments. We also saw that our youth are being taught a revised history of America, a new morality, and a different theology, no longer based on what the Bible teaches. Added to that, many of the Christian universities and Christian schools are elevating their own wisdom over the plain reading of God's Word. Today, we have too many church leaders and scholars who claim they can fix God's Word. Our youth read in Genesis chapter 1 that God created everything in six days, and then they go to a Christian school and learn that's not true. Well, let me give you a quote from a gentleman by the name of Vody Bauckham. He's a pastor, an evangelist, and an apologist, and has a doctorate in ministry. And he states this, The correlation is clear. If we continue to send our children to Caesar for their education, we need to stop being surprised when they come home as Romans. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, most of our Christian students still go to public schools, and when they finish up their 12 years of schools, many of them are no longer believing God's Word or parts of God's Word. That was Vody Bauckham. So how did we lose many of our Christian universities? How did we lose our schools? How did we lose many of our church leaders and pastors? Well, the humanist. Now, this worldview, humanism, again, is based on the ideology there is no creator God, no supernatural forces. That's what that worldview means. The humanists have basically taken control of the education system, the universities that we have today. The students were indoctrinated into evolutionism and moral relativism. It was a wonderful strategy, and it worked very well. Take control of the education system. Get into the teacher colleges and train the next generation of teachers with your philosophy on evolutionism, moral relativism, and use fancy words and equate it to science. These graduates then went into the secular universities, public schools, Christian universities, seminaries, Christian schools, and began teaching evolutionism. Billions of years of time. All of that's being taught in our Christian schools today. God required billions of years to create. Did you know I don't find that anywhere in the Bible that God used millions or billions of years? Even in many of our Christian schools, they're teaching forms of moral relativism. There are no absolutes. You know, we have Christian schools out there today where some teachers teach billions and billions of years, but yet other, other teachers in the same school teach that God created in six little days. Folks, those two both cannot be true. We're teaching our students to live with contradictions in the Christian schools today. The problem is too many are equating science to evolutionism and they make it appear plausible. Folks, evolution is not science. We can demonstrate that. Evolution has no observable facts to support their claim. No one saw the Big Bang. We can't repeat it. No one has ever seen a star or galaxy form, and based on physics, they will not do that. No one ever saw a cell evolved into existence by itself, the origin of life. Our best scientists in the world cannot even reproduce a single biological protein. No one's ever seen one creature evolve into another. No one's ever seen billions of years. No one's ever observed a canyon form of billions of years, but yet we have seen them form in a matter of days and weeks. So they're equating 
evolution to science, which it is not. See, facts and even theories in science must be observable and repeatable. So what is the plan of action? What is the solution for the church in all of this? Well, Ron Luce, in his book, Battle Cry for a Gen Generation, makes it very clear. And he states this, I can't think of a more urgent need than enabling young people to understand their faith and preparing them to defend it against the onslaught of secular thought they encounter in their schools and in popular culture. Ron has it right there, folks. We need to start training our students how to defend their faith. And that is not being done in most Christian schools and universities. The plan for all of this is simple, but it's going to take time. It is found in the Bible. We have had this plan for almost 2,000 years, but it has largely been ignored by the church. It is based upon 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, where it reads, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. This is one of the main or primary verses in the Bible dealing with biblical discipleship. What does it mean? Well, Paul is talking to Timothy. He says, Timothy, now that I've trained you, you go out and do what I did. You train others how to teach also. That is biblical discipleship. In other words, we need to increase the number of teachers who are well-grounded in God's Word and refuse to compromise it with evolutionism in billions of years and can teach biblical creation and apologetics or how to defend your faith. We desperately need Christian educators with the knowledge and skills to equip the next generations to stand firm on their faith and not compromise it with evolutionism and moral relativism. We need pastors and youth pastors who are willing to teach God's Word rather than sugarcoat it or make it too easy so that people will attend your church, leaving out the hard things like the physical death and resurrection of Jesus Christ or the many miracles of God and even God's miracle of creation in six days. We need pastors and youth pastors who are willing to teach biblical doctrines and not water them down because they might appear too hard for people. We need pastors and youth pastors with courage and commitment to God's Word and who will not be afraid to teach biblical doctrine even when people sitting in their pews might disagree. We need pastors and youth pastors who have fear of the Lord rather than fear of man. We also desperately need Christian educators who are unafraid to believe God's account of creation. See, the plan is simple. Is called carrying out God's word and his commands. It is based on 2 Timothy 2, 2, to train up others how to teach. It is based on Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. It's called the Great Commission. It is based on 1 Peter 3, 15, where it says, we're to have a ready answer, always be able to defend our faith. It is based on Jude 3, where we're told to contend for the faith. It is based on 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5, where we're told to bring down all strongholds and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And it is based on James chapter 1, verse 22, where it says, we are to be doers of the word, not just listeners. We need prayer warriors. We need people who are trained also to go on to the battlefield. That's what we need. So how can this be done? Well, Jesus gave an idea here in John chapter 14, verse 15. Jesus made this statement, if you love me, keep my commandments. What are the commandments? Well, in Matthew 22, verse 35 through 37, we read about the greatest commandment. And it says this, then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. In other words, Jesus said we are to give our heart, heart soul, and mind to God. This means God's word must be our authority in all matters, not a science textbook. 
John 17, 70 tells us clearly this. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Right there, ladies and gentlemen, it says God's word is to set us apart from the rest of the world. Do not rely on what man's wisdom has to tell us. Man, we, yes, we are outnumbered. A majority of the scientists out there believe in billions of years, folks. But God says we are to be sanctified by his word. Go to his word first and have enough courage and commitment to that word to not change it or add to it based on what the world wants you to believe, such as evolutionism, billions of years. Now, what about our youth? I asked many youth pastors this question, and I continue to get wrong answers. Here's the question I like to ask youth pastors. If this was your first year of teaching as a youth pastor, at the end of the first year, what would you want your students to be able to do or perform? Well, the number one thing we must equip the next generation to do is this, and very few youth pastors ever give me this answer. The number one thing our youth must be taught to do is to know the gospel, be able to share the gospel, and be able to defend the gospel. If that's not happening in your church, you need to talk to your pastor or youth pastor. That is the number one thing. Not just hear the gospel. Can they say the gospel themselves? Can they give the gospel to somebody in their own words? Don't just rely on them hearing it. And then challenge these students. Can they really defend the gospel? That's what we need to be doing for our youth. Very few of our youth can do this today. As a matter of fact, very few adults tending church can even do this today. Do you know we have a biblical mandate to teach, though? It's not an option in the church. It's an essential. It's not a nice thing to do. It's necessary because the church that ceases to educate ceases to be effective. So now let's get down to the bottom line. Let's talk about equipping for the battlefield. How do we solve this problem we have in America today, the battle for the very heart and soul of this nation, the changing of our theology, our history, and our morality? Well, I'm going to call this the big five. Here's what we need to be teaching, the big five. Number one, think biblically. Have a biblical worldview. Make sure you know what a biblical worldview is. It comes right in Matthew 22, verse 37. When Jesus said, you shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind, think biblically, not according to man's wisdom. Do not be deceived by people out there teaching evolutionism. Go to the Bible, be like Bereans, check it out. What does the Bible say? Do not change God's word. So number one in the big five, we need to train our youth to train, to think biblically, know how to share, defend the gospel. Number two, we need to train them how to think critically, analyze statements and challenges. Number three, we need to train them how to refute evolutionism because it is directly opposed to God's word. Number four, we need to train them how to respond to the claims of moral relativism. And number five, we need to train them how to recognize and respond to biblical compromise. In this world today, our students are not hearing that. What they're hearing and being taught is this. Abortion on demand. It's a woman's right to have an abortion. They're being taught moral relativism. There are no absolutes. They're being taught that in the schools. They're hearing it from the media and by politicians. They're being taught evolutionism, the idea that God is not the creator. And folks, if God is not the creator, then Jesus Christ simply doesn't exist as God because it is Jesus Christ who called everything into existence. And they're being taught same-sex marriage is okay. How are they going to survive all of that unless the church starts teaching? We must prepare them to be evangelists, to be able to carry out the Great Commission. That is the number one focus of all churches. That should be the Great Commission. They must know the full gospel, know how to share it, and know how to defend it. We must train them to defend their faith under all the attacks from the world. It is called apologetics. That is 1 Peter 3.15. Have a ready answer always. Jude 3, we are told to contend for the faith. 2 Corinthians 10.4.5, we're told to bring down all strongholds and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. This is not just for pastors. This is for all Christians, and we can start this in the early grades. Now, let's talk about some of these things we can be teaching. 
Let's talk about apologetics, which does not mean we go out and apologize for what we believe. It is Greek, apologia, which means we can defend what we believe. There are four main areas I put in here. One is called practical apologetics, then critical thinking skills, then science foundations, and then presuppositional apologetics. What do we mean by each of these? This, again, is what we need to be teaching our youth in our Christian schools and in our Sunday schools in church. Practical apologetics. We need to be training them how to answer basic biblical questions like, who did Cain marry? Was there really a worldwide flood? How could Adam name all the animals in one day? How do you fit dinosaurs in the Bible? How could all the creatures fit onto Noah's Ark? How could the first three days of creation be little days that the sun was not created till day four? That is what we call practical biblical apologetics. Then we need to train them on critical thinking skills. In other words, don't focus so much on the evidence you're challenged with, but focus on analyzing the statements, the very words they're using. Make the non-believer accountable for their statements. In other words, how to turn the situation around from being on the defense to being on the offense. We need to make sure the unbeliever see if they know why they believe what they believe. Now, here are three critical thinking questions we can train our students to ask. Three questions when you're confronted with evolutionism. Number one, how do you know it's true? How do you know it's true? Number two, has it ever been observed? We well, you know no one's ever observed, Dar- observed Darwinian evolution. Again, nobody observed the Big Bang. Nobody observed one creature changing into a new kind of creature. Nobody observed the origin of life. No one's observed a star form. No one's observed large canyons forming over millions of years. Matter of fact, no one's observed millions and billions of years. So what have we observed in evolution? Nothing. Bears become bears. Giraffes become giraffes. Bacteria become bacteria. People become people. We do not see anything other than that. So how do you know it's true? Has it ever been observed? And number three, are you making any assumptions? You see, if we can't see evolution happening in the present, and we don't, that means the whole ideology, the whole philosophy of evolution is based on faith. It's based on assumptions. So we need practical apologetics. We need critical thinking skills. Then we need a foundation in science. Not that we all have to be scientists, but I call this science foundations. Learning how to turn the situation around, such as asking your opponent, the non-believer, where did the matter come from to create this universe? Did you know from nothing, nothing comes? Not, I'm not talking about the Big Bang. You have to have something there to create this Big Bang. And if you have no God, there can be no Big Bang. And there was no Big Bang in the Bible either, folks. God, let me make this plain, God did not use the Big Bang. It clearly states how he created everything. He spoke it all into existence by his great power without having to use a Big Bang. And he did it in six little days. So where did the universe come from? How did life originate? Where did the dinosaurs come from? Why is that important? Well, I've been to museums all over the world. I see dinosaurs. What am I not seeing? all the hundreds to thousands of transitions that led up to the dinosaurs, why are they not in the museums? What are the assumptions used in the dating methods? Do you know all these radiometric dating methods are all based on assumptions and they have been discredited today? Another question, what is the foundation for the fossil record? We're talking about the bottom layers, the Precambrian, Cambrian eras there. You know what we find in those bottom layers? Fossils of single cells. You know what else we find? Very complex creatures like fish, trilobites, seashells. What do we not find? One single transition leading up to all these different body shapes. So those are the science foundations. Where did the universe come from? How did life originate? Where did the dinosaurs come from? What are the assumptions and the dating methods? How to dismantle the idea of billions of years of time? What is the foundation for the fossil record? That's our science foundations. And then presuppositional apologetics. I can teach this to junior hires, and they can understand most of this. Questions like, who made God? Where did God come from? Show me any evidence for the existence of God. Or how can you call God good when he allows evil to continue? Why are Christians so intolerant? That's true for you, but not for me. That's when we get down to the presuppositional. And we can learn this. So we need to have the practical apologetics, the critical thinking skills, the science foundations, and the presuppositional apology, those are things we need to be teaching. That is part of our big five there. We need teachers who can teach these things. 
Our Christian teacher colleges are not doing this for us. So where can teachers get this type of training? How can youth pastors get this type of training? There are great organizations out there already today. There's an organization called Answers in Genesis. Answers in Genesis. They come out with a magazine. This starting new year is going to come out every two months. It's called Answers. That's the name of the magazine. How can you find out about that? Go to their website. This is Answers in Genesis website. It is called www.answersingenesis.org. Go to that website. Many resources out there. Another organization, a great organization, is the Institute for Creation Research. They do tremendous research there, and they come out with that research in a journal called Acts and Facts. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a free journal. Get this one, Acts and Facts. What is their website? How can you find out about them? Go to their website. It's called www.icr.org. That's www.icr.org. Then there's Creation Ministries International, another great organization. They have a magazine called Creation. It's wonderful, full of information. How do you find out about them? Go to their website. It's called www.creation.com. That's creation.com. There are three great organizations you can go to and find out tremendous amounts of information. Then we at Creation Training Initiative, or CTI, we actually have training courses that will get you started. Some of these courses include... We have four one-day training classes, and we come to your church or location to do these courses, four one-day training courses. These are our basic creation training. That's a one-day class, 8.30 to 5.30, and that class is for teens and above, 13 years old and above. We will train you on biblical creation and how to defend your faith against evolutionism there. A second course we have is called Creation uh, or Advanced Creation Apologetics. This is a one-day course on answering those questions like, give me any evidence for the existence of God. How can you call God good when he allows evil to exist? We train you how to answer those type of challenges. Then we have our Christian teacher training class, a one-day course for anybody who wants to learn how to teach or is teaching, wants to learn what does the Bible say how we're to teach. What is our measure of success as a teacher? How can we educate for success? Then we have a, a new one called our Christian Educators Conference on how to learn to teach biblical creation. What things do you need to know to teach biblical creation? Then we also have our five-day course called our Creation Apologetics Teachers College. We only offer this course once a year, just once a year. And we only take 60 students in there. This is for college age and above. In 2017, we're going to hold this course in August, August 14th through the 19th. It will be held at the Glorieta Conference Center in Glorieta, New Mexico, just outside Santa Fe. If you want to find out more about that course, that is a five-day training class. When you're done, you are ready to start teaching biblical creation and apologetics. It is more rigorous than any semester or year that you'll have in a Christian university. Go to our website, www.creationtraining.org. That's creation training, all one word, creationtraining.org. In my 45 years of being in the educational field, I've taught in public schools. Christian schools, universities, graduate school, many churches, business world. I ran U.S. Sprints and Microsoft's Worldwide Engineer Training. I was also instructor in the United States Marine Corps. Over 45 years in the education field, what I found out is the greatest teaching tactic ever was the one used by Jesus Christ. And I find part of that in 2 Timothy 2, 2, called Biblical Discipleship. Train others how to teach God's Word and defend their faith. Well, there's a great need, folks, for missionaries to go to all parts of the world. We must recognize the mission field is also in our own backyard. So how can you contact us at Creation Training Initiative or CTI? Well, again, go to our website. It's called www.creationtraining.org. That's all one word, creationtraining.org. Or you can email us at info, that's I-N-F-O, at creationtraining.org. We operate strictly on your generation, your generous donations. We've already trained over 1,000 people in our one-day course and over 150 in our five-day course. Please consider supporting us at CTI so we can continue to go to the mission field right here in America and equip the next generation of leaders to stand firm on God's Word. 
We need to make sure that Big Five gets out there to train this next generation to think biblically, to train them to think critically and analyze statements and challenges. Three, learn how to refute evolutionism. Four, respond to the claims of moral relativists. And five, recognize and respond to biblical compromise. Jim Wilson, graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy, fought in the Korean War, made this statement in his book, Principles of War, a Handbook of Strategic Evangelism. In the study of warfare, great men have concluded that there are some overriding principles that have followed will always tend toward success in battle, and if neglected or ignored, will tend toward defeat or even destruction. That is also true in the spiritual realm. E. Ray Moore, B.A. in political science, master of theology, made this statement. Christians are not powerless. What is needed is a plan that can be translated into action on the part of Christian educators, Christian parents, pastors, and youth leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, we have laid out that plan and the strategy. Now it's time to put that plan into action. I'm Mike Riddle, host of Defending the Faith. You can find us every Saturday at 12 noon, or you can listen to these programs on podcast on either KBXL 94.1 FM, or you can go to our website, creationtraining.org, and find these podcasts out there. But the time is now to take action. Thank you, and God bless you. That's all for today's show. Defending the Faith airs each Saturday at noon right here on KBXL 941 The Voice. For more teachings and resources, visit creationtraining.org or the program archive page on 941thevoice.com.